So let's get, let's get uh, things started with a keynote from Wayne Stambo. Wayne Stambo is an electronics engineer with over 30 years of experience in electronics design, C, C++, embedded applications, you name it. Python as well. And he has been working on KiCad since it was, you don't hear me? Uh, since it was founded in 2007. And he is a project leader since 2011, KiCad project leader. So I think you should put your hands together for a warm welcome for Wayne Stembo. Well, thank you for that introduction and the round of applause. I appreciate it. Um, it's great to be back to the live conference again. Um, we were hoping after KeyCon 2019 that this would be an annual thing, but uh, you know, COVID had other ideas. So hopefully from here out, we'll be doing this annually. Uh, can't make any promises, but I, that's the goal anyway. Um, it's good to be back in front of a uh, live audience and, and in front of our users instead of, I did a couple of virtual conferences and I, if, I don't, if I never know, do another one of those again, that'll be fine with me. I, I prefer face to face over you know, talking to my computer. So without uh, further ado, um, I'm gonna talk about some things that have happened in KeyCon. I'm not going all the way back to 2019. That would be way too much of a presentation. So things that, are ha that have happened in the last year since the KeyCon, basically since, or since FOSDEM 2022. So um, if you wanna see further back, you can go look at some of my uh, uh, FOSDEM talks from they're all the, uh, on the two online versions, the virtual versions, if you wanna see what happened in between 2029 and, and here. So, so anyway, so I'm gonna talk about a little, little bit that's what's been going on with KeyCat in the last year, year and a half or so. So as many of you know, we released stable version seven on February 2nd, uh, uh, about a two, two and a half years ago, we decided to go to an annual release schedule. Um, it looks like that's gonna work pretty well for us. So um, version eight will be, we're gonna, we're gonna be actually feature freeze here at the end of the month, and then we'll go into our bug fixing and stability polishing cycle and then the goal is january 31st to release version 8. so i'll talk a little bit about what's coming up and what what happened in version 7 and what's coming up in version 8. Uh, we had our our version 8 end of year donation campaign which went really well this year um, between the individual contributions and the corporate matches we uh when we ex exceeded two hundred thousand dollars which is pretty impressive so we started out with, I think the very first campaign we had might have made 15,000. So way back, when, I don't even know when the first one was. So now we're, we're, we're really, the project's really strong. Um, the, ad, the, adaptation, the, adapt, you know, the adoption of KeyCAD by uh, the user base, both individual users and corporate users has grown so much that we, you know, we're, now make, we're now pulling in quite a bit of revenue. Um, We've added three new members to the lead development team in that time. Uh, that's always good because there's, you know, there's always turnover. So it was, we bring new people in. It's, it's nice being able to get people up to speed and working on KeyCAD. Because for those of you who know, who actually work on KeyCAD knows that's not a small, that's not a small task. KeyCAD's a pretty heavy lift, even for experienced developers. So anytime we can get some new blood in there and, and on the team, that's a good thing. Um, one of the things that has happened recently is uh, Wachu, Next PCB. They're one of our uh, sponsors. They're in the process of paying um, some full-time developers to work on KeyCAD. They currently have one person, and that person is being brought up to speed, um, which, is, which is good. So we have uh, uh, presence in Asia, which is one of the places where we've been kind of weak traditionally. You know, historically, Europe and the United States has been our biggest markets, so it's it's nice to try to get some uh, some visibility in Asia. So that's really, really interesting. I'm excited for that. So it's a kind of a new direction, you know, a, a new place where we haven't been a lot. Um, we promoted a, one of the problems that we've had historically is the library team. We, we, you know, we have a lot of contributions, but we don't have enough people to do reviews. But we've, in the last two years, we've made some really good progress on that. There's a bunch of new tools. We, we, we've spun up a bunch of new librarians um, and, and we're starting to, you know, make a decent dent in the backlog, the merge request backlog. So for those of you who 
you know, submitted merge requests for uh, libraries. Uh, thank you for your patience. Um, that's, we're, I, th I think we're moving in the right direction there. So things are going well there. Um, the other thing that's interesting, so as the, as, as the commercial world gets more comfortable with KeyCAD, um, I, I have uh, some direct contacts with the folks at Worth Electronics, and they have started to basically make their libraries public, which I, I'm, I'm real thankful to the, guy, the folks at Worth. I mean, that's, they have quite an extensive uh, uh, part library, so they're providing, um, making it all open. They're, 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 not, they're using our licensing uh, agreements with their 3D models and their footprints, and so they, they've, they've got one in now, so they're, it, it's starting to, you know, for them, they're just getting comfortable with the, the library process. So they're, um, um, they're getting up to speed. And what I'm hoping is, is as, as more and more of their libraries stuff makes it into our libraries, that other vendors will go, hey, yeah, we'd like to do that too. So I'm hoping that that will kind of lead into other commercial companies helping out with the, you know, the library, uh, because that's a, big, that's a big part of KeyCAD. Um, I, d I am excited to announce, um, it's not 100% official, but it looks like it's, it's definitely gonna happen in November. We don't have a hard date yet, but I will um, make an announcement no known when it does happen. Um, we're gonna have a mini conference in Shenzhen, China this year. So it's part of our, um, you know, to, to hopefully get people in Asia excited about, you know, using KeyCAD. So um, that's really exciting. And the other thing is, is we now, so in the, like the last year and a half, we now have four platinum sponsors, which is for those of you who don't know, that's 15K donation annually, um, which, you know, two years ago we had none. <laughs> so now we have four. So it's, uh, yes, thank you. So thanks, thanks to our, uh, and so, you know, I want to give those people the props for, um, you know, Eisler, longtime um, sponsor for KeyCAD. They've been around pretty much since the beginning. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're platinum. Uh, the folks at DigiKey, thanks to DigiKey, they've, they've, always, they've always stepped up and helped us out a lot. Um, uh, Watch your PCB new. They're, they're, our, they're our latest um, uh, uh, platinum sponsor. And then, of course, KeyCAD Services Corporation. We like, you know, Seth and I like to give back to the project that we believe in and work on. So um, thanks to those, those people who, you know, stepped up and that really helps the project out a lot. Okay, so moving on. So version seven, we're gonna, I'm just gonna cut through this because a lot of you are probably aware version seven's been out for a while. And please keep in mind, this is just the highlight, the most of the user face, facing stuff. There's hundreds of small little improvements that, that happened in version seven that I just can't cover here. So. So some of the things that uh, the common features is we now have custom font support. So for people who've been requesting that for a long time, you can you can now use any font that your system supports in 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 your both your schematics and your boards. So that's that was a big change. Uh, the folks at 3D Connections stepped up. One of their developers, I think he did it on his own time, right? He stepped up and integrated the 3D space connection space mouse support for KeyCAD. Um, now that's only Mac and Windows because the support on Linux is, there's support there, but I don't think it's mature enough for a full port, but maybe someday that'll happen as well. Um, we also added the, so we had the plugin manager before, we now have uh, the plugin manager now do automatic update checking. That happened in version seven. Um, we have some drag and drop support now, so you can just like drag a schematic into the Either, or a project into the project manager and it'll, it'll load the project and launch things. That's new. Um, we have Apple Silicon support, which just happened not that long ago. So if, for those of you who have fancy new Apple M1 hardware or M series hardware, we have native, we have native uh, binaries for you. Um, the command line interface, that was a long requested feature that got implemented kind of at the last minute in version seven, but it actually has been pretty painless. <laughs> It's kind of one of those things we let slip through the, the uh, hard freeze, but it's worked out real well. People seem to like it. Um, we also, the preferences panel, instead of, we used to have like a bunch of individual ones, now it's kind of all combined into a single preferences panel. So that's it for the common stuff. So the schematic editor um, didn't get as many changes as the board editor did in seven, but it got some, some, some pretty significant updates. It's the new shape tools, 
Um, uh, text, there's now text boxes. We have orthogonal wire dragging. So, you know, the, when you drag a symbol around, the wires do their best to keep connected. Um, we added off-grid ERC warnings. So for those of you who are aware, if you put a symbol at anything less than 50 mil grid, you, 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 if you make it really small, you can't see that it's not connected. In, in the past, you would not know that it was not connected, so we added an ERC warning for that. Um, we have support for drawing 45 degree wires. There's now a DNP, a do not populate symbol, which, uh, which we use in the uh, uh, symbol editor that can, uh, it's, I think in eight, it actually gets synced between the board editor and, and um, is it in seven too? Okay, that is in seven, couldn't remember. Um, we also support database libraries, which was one thing that's been requested for a long time. So if you have an ODBC connector for your favorite you know, database, you can now create libraries for KiCad using your database. So you can, if you're clever and industrious, you can integrate that into your MRP system or however you want to do that. Um, there's uh, dynamic fields in the symbol chooser, so you can set up your, the fields you want to see in the symbol chooser instead of, before it was just, you got what you got, now you can, you can change that. Um, there's also embedded hyperlinks now in the, the symbol editor, so you can go to things like a website or another, a file or another page in, in the, inside the editor. So the PDF plotter got a bunch of updates in seven, so things like bookmarks and you you know there's hover information so if you generate a pdf and you hover over a symbol you'll see like all the fields in like a pop-up uh as well as hyperlinks so that was a a big change for uh it, they all are prior to that our pdfs were just basically images um it's a bunch of er we have a bunch of erc improvements this time around um, the things that were missing over the past including things like missing units so if you had a multi-unit symbol and you didn't include all the units, it wouldn't, you wouldn't know it unless you looked at the net list and you realized, oh, something's missing. So we have uh, checks for that now. Um, we, uh, we've added a couple of alternate line styles. Uh, so, you know, we have the, before we only had dashed and solid, now there's dash dot and dash dash dot, and <laughs> all the clever little line styles for uh, editing. Um, now you can annotate selected symbols before the annotation tool just worked on sheets and the entire schematic. Now you can select a bunch of symbols and just annotate that group of selected symbols. Um, the, we, we, one thing that we also changed was we, we, we allowed symbols to stack pins. So in like for big complex FPGAs where you have a bunch of ground pins or a bunch of VC, you know, power pins, you just stack them all on top of each other and it's a single connection. You don't have to try to connect, you know, 50, 50 ground pins and 50 VCC pins. Uh, and the ERC supports that and does a good job of checking if you did something that you weren't supposed to do there. Um, we made a bunch of changes to the symbol uh, pin table editor. So that's the big table that allows you to edit, bulk edit your symbol fields and settings. Uh, so the board editor, so the board editor received the biggest chunk of love in, in version seven. So there's huge changes in the DRC, um, for version seven, uh, really some really nice checks in there. Um, there's now, uh, uh, there was a check added to that allows you to make sure, see if your, uh, footprints in your libraries change from the ones that are currently in your board. So if you edit, you make an edit to a footprint, it'll check and see if you, uh, changed it and then you can update it directly without having to go do that manually. Um, we added a few new uh, custom uh, clearance rules uh, for mechanical um, set it, you know, mechanical things. Um, we also added pad to zone custom rules so you can define a custom rule for a pad or a zone. Um, radial dimensions made it in before we just had linear dimensions so we now have, radi we now have radi radial dimensions. Um, inverse text boxes before we only had the positive text now you can you can invert it so the text is the negative if you so choose in your in your boards um, we added automatic zone filling this was a feature that was requested a long time ago that we kind of hesitated at because of the performance issues uh, we do have it now um, you can disable it if you have it, it's still a problem if you have like a really complex board with a lot of complex geometry 
you'll, you're, it's not going to be very useful autofill your zones while you're working. It's just going to be too much. But it is there for simple boards. It works real well. Um, so we had a bunch of, I mean, there was a bunch of cleanup of the PC, the layout tools. Um, just about everything got touched during V7. Um, and mo all of it was for the better. A lot of optimizations and, and user friendliness stuff. Um, we added background bitmaps to uh, one of the things we have a lot of people that, like, that have to reverse engineer legacy boards for which they don't have um, the Gerber, the photo plots. So you can now use a background. If, if you scale it correctly, you can kind of route over top of the original, at least the outside layers, if you would like. So you can embed a embed the image and then do the routing. So that you can do that now. Um, you can do selected object rip up. Before it was kind of an all or nothing deal. If you wanted to rip up a tracks, you had to rip up one at a time or you know, a whole bunch of time. Now you can select an object like a footprint and it'll just rip up everything connected to the footprint. Um, there was a tool added. I, I don't know how many people had a chance to play around with this, but it's, it's not a substitute for an auto router, but if you have like a lot of simple line, like connector to connector connections, you can select the two connectors and it'll just, it'll just manually route you know, straight line routes. It, it gets a little struggles on complex stuff, but for simple stuff, it's a great time saver. Um, there's now a search panel, so instead of having to open a find dialog, there's a panel on the bottom. You can display it, you can search. It'll show you everything that searched through it. You click it, hyperlinks you to the, it links you, you know, it pops up the, what you're working on on the board. Um, we improved the uh, footprint spread and the pack and move tool, so you know when you first, export a netlist into the board editor. In the past, it didn't do a very good job of you know, putting your footprint. It used to stack them all on top of each other, but then the original spread worked so-so, but the new spread's uh, way, way improved. So that was a big change. Um, bunch of step importer improvements. For, so for those of you who have to do MCAD work, um, there's been a lot of big changes in the uh, step exporter. Um, we added an option to be able to plot so a lot of you use the Gerber's, your plotters for documentation. You want to plot your documentation layers on top of every copper layer. So we've added stuff for that. There's a nice clearance. We had a nice clearance resolution tool. So if you're trying to figure out what clearance you have set for two objects, you select the two objects, do a right click to see the clearance, and you can see it exactly. So if you have like custom rules or you have like any of the uh, overrides in your clearances, you can see what the final clearance is supposed to be. Um, and then we've added the board stack up and, and characteristics configuration dialog so you can you know, set your impedances, uh, layer, you know, your, your mask colors, your silk screen colors, all that stuff is there. Board thickness, uh, including the number of layers. So that's, uh, that, would, that, made it, that was part of seven. And also we added a wavelength uh, panel. There's a calc to the wave, to the, cal the, the PCB calculator, there's a wavelength uh, calculator in there now and somebody added fusing currents so you can do things like cable size make sure that, you know your cables handle can handle the current and we added viewports to the uh, 3d viewer so you can save a, a, a the set a setting a setting of for your viewports and you always come back to that setting you can like kind of it's kind of like viewports in the the board editor so that's that was, that was the short list of things in V7. Um, so as most of you, probably most of those you're probably aware of. If not, you, know, you just haven't gotten around to using them yet. Um, so moving on to V8. So as I just mentioned earlier, feature freeze in V8 will be the end of the month. Most of these things that I, I list here are already in, in the code base. There's a few that are still pending that need to be merged, but I think everything here is actually going to make it in, will be available in version 8 when it comes out in the beginning of 2024. So we've made a lot of S SVG export uh, improvements. That's one place where our SVG export wasn't the best. It's getting pretty good now. We added a splash screen for <laughs> something we've never had, <laughs> but we, we've added, we added that. Um, we have, there's now an alternate hotkey. Um, you can define a second hotkey, an alternate hotkey for an action. Um, we also now have ARM64 support for Windows users. So for those of you Windows users who are using ARM64 devices, you won't have to emulate anymore. Um, there's, uh, this, is, this one's getting, do we 
merging, it just merged, right? So the easy, there's an easy EDA. So for those of you who are trying to migrate projects from easy, easy, ED, easy EDA, we now have a full project employer for that in place. Um, uh, we also have, you can run the ERC and DRC now from the command line and you'll get a, uh, the output will be a JSON format. So you'll be able to look at the, you'll get a text output of what you would normally see in like the DRC dialog. So if you want to do DRC checks from the, if you want to batch DRC checks and ERC checks, you can do that now. Um, <clears throat> there were, we're going to support, uh, one of the problems we have when, with importing some other third party things like Altium, they support flat schematics. So you, a lot of you are familiar, you just add a sheet at the same level, you know, a, 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 sch a schematic file. But right now with KiCad, you have to make it a hierarchical sheet. Um, in eight, we're gonna go to, we're gonna also support flat, flat schematics. So that'll be part of eight. Um, the object, so in seven, we only had the object inspector in, in the board editor. Now there's object inspectors in all the editors. So you click on an object, you get the panel, you'll be able to edit the, all the parameters. And if you select multiple objects, you'll be able to edit all the common parameters, which is a, which is a real handy tool to have. Um, <clears throat> There's now a highlighted, so if you work on really complex boards or schematics with uh, 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 complex buses, you know, sometimes you highlight a net, that, that bus might cross 10, 15 sheets, right? So it's not easy to navigate. So there's now a navigator panel that when you click on the highlight net, you can see the nodes and you click on the node, take you to the sheet right to that node. So I think eventually we'll sp expand that out into a full net navigator. There's still some performance issues we have to consider for that, but I think eventually that, that will happen. Um, we all, now there's also now a search panel in the schematic editor, just like there was in the board editor. Uh, we now have one of the most requested features forever. We, we now have an internal bomb tool. So for those of you who are familiar with the uh, library editor table in, in the schematic editor or the symbol library, the symbol to editor table, in there now there's a bomb tool. You can select the, the fields you want to export, uh, the format, I think, is it format or just, you, you can, it's, it's pretty similar to what a lot of other products have. I mean, you just click the button and it'll export your bombs. Instead of having to run the script, the old either Python scripts or uh, XSL, yeah, XSL proc, you don't have to run XSL proc to get your bombs now. Um, <clears throat> one of the neat features that was recently aligned or added was a, there's a object grid alignment tool and this, you can set up your, you can have a grid per object, right? You can set this up to, so if you're, you're placing a symbol, you can say, I always want to use 50 mil grid and it'll automatically say when you get a symbol, even if you have the current grid at five mils, cause you were like placing some text around, it'll automatically go, it, when you, as soon as you start the symbol, it'll go, it'll snap to 50 mil grids. So those all, hopefully those off grid issues will, will go away. Uh, I played around with it. It was just pushed not that long ago. It works pretty well. Um, <clears throat> we now have nested symbol inheritance. Uh, currently, you can only do one one layer, one level of inheritance. Uh, in in uh, in eight, you'll be you'll have infinite levels of inheritance. I I'm doing a talk tomorrow on that. It's uh, it makes your life a little easier if you do a lot of symbol editing. Um, there's now uh, tools to check for symbol library differences, just like there is for f like there was for footprint libraries in seven. Uh, we have Cadence Allegro uh, PCB designer netlist export. So if you want to do your schematics in KiCad and export it to Cadence, you can export the netlist and then import it into Cadence. Um, <clears throat> we now support uh, S SVGs and DXF import into the schematic and symbol editors. There's a CAD star symbol library importer. <clears throat> so there's a lot of importer improvements. We have Altium symbol library importer, Eagle symbol library importer. Uh, there's now a symbol, uh, oh, how do I get off the end of the page there? Um, there's now a symbol editor uh, library tree preview. So if you hover over the, the, li the, the library tree, you hover over a part, it'll give you a quick pop-up preview. So you don't have to double click on it to to actually see it in the drawing space. <clears throat> we now have a live file file watcher. So if you edit 
if say a symbol library you're working on gets edited outside the symbol library editor and it changes, it'll tell you, hey, the file changed, you want to overwrite those changes or you know, just you know, get rid of the, your current changes so you don't have any clashes. Um, we have a, uh, we now have a, a one button click, one click button to uh, save your libraries to KiCad format. In the past, it was a, a little bit of a chore to, so if you import, so let's say you import an Eagle library as an Eagle library, it always is an Eagle library, you can't edit it. But now you just click a button, it saves it as a, saves it as a, a KiCad library, and now you can edit it at will. Um, we now import LT Splice schematics. So for those of you who use LT Splice for simulations, you can now directly import them and simulate inside of KiCad. And for those of you who haven't been paying attention, there's been a huge number of changes in the uh, Splice simulator. So there's a whole bunch of new uh, 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 graphs like FFT, supports S parameters, Fourier analysis. Um, there's uh, Operating, so yeah, I think there's operating voltages now, right? You can see the operating points in your schematics. If you run the op, you know, it'll figure out all the DC voltages and you can show them on your schematic. Um, so we're, we're really making a lot of improvements to this, this uh, simulation, the schematic simulator. And the other thing now is power symbols are not fixed. You can now edit them um, in, in place in the symbol editor or in the, the schematic editor. Before, you're kind of stuck with the name, so if, if you wanted to change them, you had to go make another one, and that's no longer the case in, in version eight. <clears throat> so the board editor, this time around, the board editor didn't get as much uh, love as the, the schematic editor, but uh, that's because it got all the love in seven. Um, did I already have that? No, I think I did, that, that shouldn't be in there. That first one will happen in seven. Um, there's now an Altium footprint library importer. Um, we can import SOLIDWORKS PCB files now. Um, the DMP, as I mentioned earlier, um, is in the board as well, so you, and they, you sync them between the schematics, so your, your position files can be created with, with, with or without DMP information. Um, we, have, <clears throat> we're, we, allow, we now allow connectivity, so you can assign a net to any arbitrary copper shape and, and, and route to it. Um, we, can t we have interactive meander tuning, so you can, you can tune the uh, meanders for your differential pairs and other meandering, uh, your length meanders uh, interactively. Uh, there's a bunch of, we made a bunch of step improvements again. Um, Mark's been dil diligently working on that. Um, there's now, a, there's also a preview, the same preview pop up that you had in the symbol library editors also in the footprint library editor. So if you hover over the library tree on the left hand side of the footprint editor, it'll pop up a little image. You don't have to select it to see what it is. Um, we also have now have a CAD star footprint library exporter. You could directly, if you have a bunch of CAD star libraries, footprint libraries laying around, you can Im import those directly. Um, <clears throat> not a lot as far as miscellaneous, but we have done have made quite a few changes to the user interface for the 3D viewer. A uh, lot of major improvements there that are, are real nice uh, that are gonna happen in V8. So like I said, that's not a comprehensive list in any way, shape, or form. That's a, uh, it's just a, the, the big forward-facing things that you'll see when, when version eight comes out. So in conclusion, I'd like to say thanks to everybody, our, especially our sponsors for KeyCon this year. Uh, Seth, Seth already mentioned uh, DigiKey, KeyCAD Services, PCBWA, and UXV. Uh, thanks for the sp sponsoring this event. These events, you know, take time and money, and so it, that helps offset the cost for the project. Um, as always, thanks to the my, thanks to all the developers, and by developers I mean anybody who contributes to KeyCAD, not just the de de development team, but librarians. Um, uh, the, the, we, we have some people actually working pretty regularly on documentation now. Uh, I, I can't, ex you know, I can't express my gratitude for all the hard work that everybody does for KeyCAD. Um, thank you to all our sponsors who donate to KeyCAD directly, as well as the individuals who donate to KeyCAD. Your sponsors help, keep, your sp uh, donations help keep the project running. Um, thank you for using KeyCAD. Um, 
without the user base, we wouldn't be where we are today. And, and that's, and that's uh, thanks to you guys for using KeyCAD and, and interest in it. And um, I'd, really, I'd like to make a, a special thanks to Seth and uh, Carlos. These events, for those of you who have never planned an event like this, a, a conference before, it's not trivial. Uh, I, I know I don't know if I'd want to do it, so um, I, you know, it's a lot of hard work. It goes on behind the scenes. Most of it's probably not as appreciated as much as it should be. So thanks to those two for uh, you know, uh, organizing this event, and I hope to see you all at KeyCon 2024. So wherever that is, we'll, we'll make the announcement whenever that's going to happen, and, uh, but we'll definitely, there will definitely be a KeyCon 2024. It's just a matter of where and when. So thank you very much. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, are there any questions? I have a microphone. I can work it around. No questions? Okay. Hi, Wayne. Thanks for the talk. Um, I was wondering if there are any planned changes to the file format for version 8. Yeah, yeah there, there you mean uh, with all, any of the file formats? Schematics or? and boards. Yes, the schematics file formats will change in in, in uh, yeah yeah. There's far less changes, but there are some. There were some changes to fix some issues with uh, one. Of the, probably the biggest change you'll see is the, or do we backport that the fixed for uh, the orphaned uh, when you share sh share sheets. We we did change that. That we no we didn't backport. No, no there's no backport. So that'll be a big change. Um, most of the other stuff is just support the new features, so like the new line types, um, the new shapes. The, but yeah, there will be some changes. Right. But Thank yeah, you. I don't think it's, it's substantial. I stepped aside because it was in the of the camera. Not for V8, but between V7 and V8, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think there'll be, if, or you meant from between v, version 7 and version 8, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, the, yeah, there'll be changes. Um, yeah, but I think we're pretty much, I don't think we have anything left. So if you're, using, if you're running nightly builds, I don't think we have anything major coming down the pike for... recently stuck dates into the board format list. I just recently stuck dates into the board formats list, you know, where we've got them all in, right. commented out. And it was quite striking in that there were two or three changes for four, and two or three changes for five, and two or three changes for six, I think, and then 50 changes for seven, and then back down to like six for eight or something. Yeah. So the bulk of it really was in six and seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, like I said, it, most, of the, most of the changes were just for the new features, I think, the file format changes. I, I think that's what most of it was for. I just had a quick question as far as file formats. We had some customers send us some KiCad files, you know, and we're trying to decipher how long ago were these generated, and we opened up most of them and found one file finally that showed us it was way back in version 4, and so it made me curious, so I started opening up some fresh ones from version 7, and some said right up front, version 7 point, you know, gave yeah. the full lineage, and others were like, nah, we're not going to tell you. Yeah, well, so. the, the old, the, the, so yeah, so if you had a four, that was the old, the old um, before S expressions. So yeah, that, that was, that was actually, we had a versioning system. So we, you'd see something like 2.1 or 2.3. Right, yeah, but it made no correlation to the average user. They had no idea what. No time, and yeah. And even no. now, like I think it was the PCB files that were, when you opened it, it, it told you what type of, what they used to, to package it, but again, it wasn't human readable. So I'm just curious if, if it, it, it was very good to see the ones that were nice and clear, and just curious if in the future they're looking at yeah, when you the, open it up in a text editor, you could just see right away. Yeah, okay. you that don't that won't change. I don't I don't think the header format will change. I don't think okay. the header format will change for either the board any any of the file formats. I I, I think yeah, well, that's been fixed now for as soon as the S expressions were. You know, once we, as we converted from the old format over to the S expression formats, that, that's pretty much been constant. Anything more? Yes? Who, 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 who
Hi, Wayne. Hey, Seth. What was your favorite feature that didn't make it into eight that you ended up pushing back to nine now that you're coming up on feature freeze? Oh, I suppose what, what, what are the big ones that, uh, that, that are going into nine that looking forward? Um, <clears throat> I think, I think for, for me was, um, I was really hoping to keep, we, we don't have a variant system and that's kind of like a hole in our, our, uh, our feature set. And I was hoping that we, you know, we have a spec, it's going to happen. I was hoping it would happen for eight, but, um, the amount of work to do that just realized that it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be feasible because we had too many other things to get done. Plus we also, so as you know, Seth and I do contract work for folks who pay for features. So those always get pushed to the top of the queue. And um, so for instance, the net highlighting feature, somebody paid for that. They wanted that because they do so many complex designs that it was something they needed and they needed it right now. So I think from my standpoint, at least for the symbol, the schematic editor, that's the biggest missing feature that I wish we would have gotten done. Um, the, one of the integration features I also w would have liked to seen happen this time around was pin and gate swap. And we just, you know, it just didn't happen. It, it, it's, it's there, it, it, it's gonna happen. It just didn't happen this time around. So hopefully both of those will make it in nine. As always, I can't promise, cause I don't know Somebody, if somebody comes tomorrow and says, here's this money to do this feature, we gotta have it next week, then that's what we do. We, we, that's, what keep, that's what Seth and I do. So if somebody else can't do it, then that, that has to, those, those uh, features take priority. But those are the two I wish I, wish I would've, wish would've made it into eight, but there's always nine or 10 or 11. <laughs> Uh, this is a bit uh, an open question, more related to your first part of the presentation, uh, related with sponsor and um, and uh, donations. Uh, as you said, as we are going to a more attention with uh, uh, more users and let's say big players and companies that are uh, getting attention to KiCad, uh, how are you? Can you talk uh, a bit about how, how are you managing these? Uh, sponsor and uh, if these players come with some kind of uh, agenda or are you making new feature or maybe requests i don't know these well, kind of things so so for me personally because because i am part of keycad services corporation that even though keycad services corporation exists to support commercial keycad users i mean that's why we exist because that was all so one of the arguments that historically people have made was, well, we're not gonna be able to use it in our company because I can't call somebody if something goes wrong. You know, who do I talk to? If I need help to do something, you know, so a guy who's doing board layouts all day long isn't gonna, you know, comb through the user form, the KeyCAD user form to look for, spend three hours to look up, you know, and then wade through all the minutia to find the information he needs or they need. Um, so they wanna, a single contact source, right? So that's what Seth and I provide, paid support. But as part of that, we also provide feature support. So if somebody comes to us and says, we need this feature, and then we you know, put together a quote like any other company would, and you know, we, we have an obligation to meet our, our, our users. Now, there, we do inter interface with the, the dev, dev team. That doesn't happen in a vacuum. The whole dev team comes together and says, you know, we don't, we don't jam stuff in there and say, nope, nobody has any say. It, do, it doesn't work like that. But th that does change priority of things. You know, if somebody's willing to pay for a feature, then that's a priority. But I don't, look, I don't look at that as a bad thing. Everybody wins. Everybody gets to use that feature. It's not like we make a special branch for that person or that company. It, it doesn't work that way. That all gets merged back into KeyCAD proper. So somebody... Now, maybe a feature you don't, doesn't mean anything to you, but it might be a feature that you find useful. So all those features always get merged back into the mainline keycad. Um, it's just, and then it'll be available in the next stable release. Um, so that's what we do. But as far as a company with an agenda, 
I do, I do talk to people. I, I tell people up front that, you know, KeyCAD's an open source project. It's under the GPL license. Everything we do, that's not, not going to change. I, I'm not going to change that. I don't think anybody on the dev team is interested in changing that. Um, you know, we, we run, we, we run the, it doesn't change the way the project runs, you know. And, and so far, it really hasn't been a problem. We, we, you know, it's not, like, it's not like I've had to turn people away. I think most of the people that come to KeyCAD from that um, world, under, it, it makes sense to them. When you, when you sit down and explain to them, hey, this is the way it works, it, they're, I, I, we really haven't run into that many. Yeah, I can't think of any. You know, sometimes you have to explain it to people, but you know, they get it. You know, if you're careful and, 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 you know, you know, most people are rational enough to go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Because, you know, if some other company pays for a feature that they want, they get it and they didn't pay for it. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of like an everybody, you know, everybody wins. It's, there's, you know, I, it's, I, I don't like the zero-sum game uh, mentality a lot of projects have. It's not an us or them. It's just us. <laughs> you know, we, we, we all have a, you know, when I started out working on KeyCAD, it was for people who use board, you know, design electronics for a living, because that's what I did. So that's always my, that's, that was always my goal, was guys who get up in the morning, go to work, and um, design, design electronics. You know, if you design electronics, that's what KeyCAD was. So I will, you know, it's good to get corporate involvement, because that, increases our user base, our sponsorships, you know, more, more, that brings more developers into the project, so yeah. But no, they, you, you know, I, they, I don't think, we haven't had that problem yet, and I, I you know, I would, I would stop it. I wouldn't, it's like, you know, we can't do that. No, we, we. Yep. Good to see you, welcome to Spain. Ah, okay. Este, yeah, the, um, there is a plan of to integrate an uh, um, intelligent engine for auto routing, or like machine learning, artificial uh, intelligence. Are you, can you say that again? I the, uh, intelligent engine, like a machine learning, artificial intelligence for auto routing. Are or, we are we planning an auto router? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> the the short answer is probably not. Um, it's not that we don't want to provide an auto router. It's just really hard to do good auto routing. Um, I see Tom back there laughing. Um, we, we, for those of you who've been around long enough, there's the, have you ever seen, somebody had one on yesterday, a don't trust the auto router t-shirt on. Oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> it, it, it usually ends up, for simple designs, and auto, auto routers are, are handy. I'm not, I'm not, knock, I don't want to knock auto routing, but most of the people that do complex designs rarely use auto routers. So um, if we could come up with something that really was worked really well, you know, that could be parametric and, and do a, a reasonably decent job, I don't see why we wouldn't. But so far, that's, that's a pretty monumental task to do something like that. And I don't want to do a, you know, just an auto router to say we have an auto router, you know. Oh, the AI? Machine learning. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, not yet. Not yet. I actually talked to, oh, it's been a couple of years now, a university student about doing like a feedback loop. And um, it sounded like an interesting project where you get the AI to run the simulation on their design, then you go back and iterate back and forth. But the problem is with that is if you've been around this business long enough to know, you know, I don't care what the simulation tells you, until you put it in copper and actually make it work, it, the simulation may not be close enough to the copper to the point where the, you, you may not get what you expect. So the, the feedback loop for uh, AI, I, don't, I, I just don't see how you go from the theoretical to the, to the practical without some fidelity loss. Um, I'm not saying it's not possible. You know, um, simulator, simulation has come a long, long, long way, but yeah, I, I, well, I wouldn't trust, I'll put it to you this way, I wouldn't trust a highly optimized design and ship it out the door without building one and testing it first. <laughs> just, just from my own experience, it's probably not going to work the way you want it to. So, but yeah, I mean, it's certainly if somebody had a proposal that was good, you know, 
I'm always I'm always willing to I'm always willing to listen to somebody who has a, a good proposal. I think the team would say, yeah, if it was something that was you know sufficient quality and we thought we could integrate it into KeyCAD proper, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm not opposed to that. But yeah, no, we haven't looked at it. I, not we've been pretty busy. <laughs> okay, and on top of that, it will take a while until we have the first chat GPT board. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's going to be a while. Hello, um, I use uh, KiCad for a lot of products, both my own and uh, for my customers. And um, this is a question related to the uh, how do you say the philosophy or the priority of like new features and stuff. Sometimes I. I have to use commercial uh, PCB editors for the lack of certain features in KiCad, but usually I like KiCad more. That's like the user experience that I like to use. So if I can, I, I will use it. But what is, what do you, at least what do you consider like the priority or the philosophy? Are you trying to mostly, let's say, <coughs> make a better but different experience than the commercially available? Or are there more a focus on, let's say, you actually want to get a grab of some of the users that use the commercial products, but then they need to stay there because there are a set of certain features that yeah. You know, they can't risk it by moving because if they can't get it in KiCad, then they won't move. So Right, right. But do you I'm, see, like, the philosophy, the priority in that regard? Um, so, so the way the project typically works is, I mean, it's, it's not, most of the dev team knows where our holes are. We, it's not like we don't know, okay? So we, have a, we set our priorities based on what we think the most, you know, the, the, the things that we need next. Right, you know, the next batch of, you know, what do we need to, what, where are our holes? Um, no, no. Well, we always want to be better. Yeah. So, so, like as I said earlier, you know, when I started working on KiCad, it was like I didn't like, you know, we had I used commercial tools where I worked, right? You know, and I worked different places and I used different commercial tools, and I'm thinking, you know, we're paying a lot of money. I'm not really, you know, just was disappointed. And, and I'm like, I think the experience, I can, I, so I know what I want, and I'd be willing to bet if I think I, if I can get what I want, I'd be willing to bet there's a, probably a couple other guys out there designing electronics that probably like it too. Now, I, if, if somebody has something that's such a great idea, I'm not opposed to saying, yeah, we should, we should implement that because it's, that's a great idea. I'm not opposed to that. I, I don't want to be different just for the sake of being different. Um, but, it, you know, so if, if, it's, if it's a good feature, and we can implement it, and it, it's done so well in, in competitors that we just can't do it better than that. Sure, I'm I'm okay with, you know. Looking at that and saying, yeah, we should probably do it similar to that. But if we if we have a feature that it's really hard to use in a third party tool, I'm like, okay, if we're going to implement that, let's do it a little better than that. You know, let's let's make it easier for the user to use. So yeah, I mean. It's, it's not an either or, it's kind of a, a both and. You kind of look at what's available, you look at what the features you need, and then you try to implement it in the way that makes, makes sense for KiCad and makes sense for the user. You know, what's the, what's the best possible solution for our users? I mean, one of the things you'll notice in eight, even, even, well, even between six and, six and seven, there was a, big, a lot of big changes in the user and how the UI worked. There's even bigger changes, I think, in the UI. So while there's less, New feet. I think there's probably less new features overall. I think the, some of the UI stuff is a lot nicer. A lot. We, we there's been a lot of UI cleanups that just make KiCad so much easier to use, much more polished. So, yeah, it's it's kind of an iterative process for us. You know, it's not just okay. We we implement something and that's it. You know, we implement something and somebody says, hey, wouldn't it work better like this? Yeah, we'll, then we'll we'll change it. So. Um, I my interpretation of the question is that how you balance uh, feature parity with other tools and uh, polish of the KiCad itself. And it sounds like your answer is that you focus on improving KiCads. And that may be adding features that people want, but you try to keep the uh, polish in it then. Sure, sure. You know, if, if people file bug requests saying, hey, I can't, I can't yeah, you know, this course. is too hard to use, it, or, or I don't understand how to use, you know, it, it becomes pretty obvious pretty quickly to the team where, yeah, yeah, we should probably. I do have we the should impression you keep a focus on fixing things and keeping things working for the current users rather than adding features to draw in new users? It, uh, like, like anything open source, right? Everybody likes to scratch their own itch. And while we have a, we do have plan, you know, we do have, uh, you know, we try to put together a plan at the beginning of each development cycle. Um, you know, like anything, it's, you know, developer availability, um, you know, 
it's, and also feedback thing is just the, the users complaining about something is gonna it's got it's very yep. good attention. It's, uh, I've got a very good. Use uh, the thumbs up. Yes. And them. report your bugs. If you have a bug, report it. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you don't tell us about it, we don't know. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm a crystal ball. I, yeah, I don't have a crystal ball, so I uh, can't. And then I do have an extra question. Who did the poster design? Huh? Who designed the poster? Is that? Uh, we have somebody that we paid. We, yeah, we, 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 hired, we hired a designer. We hired, yeah. Hey. Keycat Services Corporation hired a designer to. It's a, well done. Uh, yeah. yeah. Was it the same designer that did the. That's right. That's right. So? Oh, yes. That's fine. That's interesting. <laughs> Hello. So um, basically, it's just an open question, not the technical one. In the first part of your presentation, you said about Wood Electronic committing to adding the libraries in the keycad. For the information, we are from both Electronic and working on the libraries right now. So I just wanted to know what long-term vision you have while collaborating with Wood Electronic, or maybe you can just put like how Wood Electronic, like we as Wood Electronic and KeyCAD can engage the users or the community to get feedback, or maybe you can say how we Wood Electronic can support your KeyCAD users uh, to, you know, uh, for the library components. Do you have any? in mind right now or maybe some suggestions uh, yeah I haven't really thought about that you know you mean you mean corporate engagement with the community at large um, we we could yeah we, we could do something for that I mean I'm certainly you know I'm, I'm certainly willing to uh, entertain you know any ideas we, we do some you know we you know we have our typical social media outlets you know if we want to um, have some kind of feedback or some kind of uh, uh, like w when we get new sponsors, we always announce it on our f our social media pages. We could probably do something like that for uh, other you know people who are contributing you know you know commercial corporations who are contributing libraries you know through their own manpower. I mean that would be something we could consider. Uh, we can talk about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm around all I'm around all weekend, so just track me down and we can talk about it. Sure, sure. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. I think we shall take one or two uh, questions yeah. and then proceed. Is yeah, I want right? to expand on that. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And any, can, I, can I expand on that just for a second? Um, yeah, I, I think it's important that we engage the, the commercial, our com commercial contrib contributors in, in, you know, openly. So um, I, I think it's important for the project. You know, we, when, you know we, we are an open project, so it's everybody counts. So if you, if we have something we can do to help, you know, promote that then because that works for us you know everybody benefits right people get all the libraries they don't have to generate their own libraries for your for your for the worth uh, uh, parts library and so yeah that's a that's a good thing so if we can do something to collaborate on that yeah, I'm all I'm all for it sure yeah we can we can do that we can yeah we can send out like a Hey, everybody okay with the with their symbol lot, you know, their libraries? Is it is it you know what you think it is? Um, uh, to be honest, if you if you get through the library standards, even I have trouble getting through that, and I I'm the project leader. Uh, if you get through the li the, the, the library uh, document, um, you're probably pretty good shape. I'm guessing your I'm guessing your libraries are pretty good because uh, yeah, yeah, it's not a tr it's not a trivial process. I think the first couple submissions I did got bounced back pretty quickly. And I'm the project leader, so go figure, right? <laughs> yeah, it's actually one outstanding uh, like the changes. So uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Next question. Was okay. there, one, there was one more question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, just a quick question: um, Is there any plan to bring in the Python API to the schematic editor? Is that on ice? <laughs> I've been uh, looking at that John, issue for a John, long time. <laughs> John and I were just talking about this earlier today. Uh, so, what what what's what has become obvious is the the managing Python and cross platform is, is it's just really hard. Okay, so what we're doing now is it's not going to happen for V8. It's going to happen for V9. Is we're going to have a, a, a 
remote procedure call, you know, uh, an RPC awesome. library, so, or an IPC if you want to call it that, internal. So um, everything will be routed through that, and then we'll st we can stack Python on top of that. But this way here, one of the problems is, is the way we use Swig, which just wraps our API, but Swig's pretty indiscreet. It'll wrap everything, things that you don't want to expose that can cause KiCad to crash or whatever. Um, we, we, re we really need to think that and have a hard, we need to have like a hard interface to KiCad proper so we're not making a mess of things. So that's gonna happen in nine. Um, whether a Python API gets built on top of that for the schematic editor, I don't know. The board editor definitely will get ported, but it, John's up here shaking his head yes, so is that, is that a yes, John? Yeah, I was just trying to get the... <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, that oh, sounds okay. awesome, though. Yeah, John, John's working on that, so John Evans is working on it, so he's a little bit uh, further along. To, he, can, he can explain more where he is and what he's Sorry, got planned. it was not for an answer. I thought it was for a question. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we, we don't have a committed timeline for this right now, which is why it's not on the slides. Uh, but we are basically, uh, instead of just uh, providing something that looks like the current uh, PCB API, but in the schematic, we uh, are trying to build something that is actually sustainable engineering-wise that we can uh, reliably add to and that users can rely on and they don't have to keep uh, rewriting their scripts every time a new KiCad version comes out. Uh, and this is a lot of work, but it's work that's going on in the background and hope to have uh, stuff to share on that before too long. Yep, thanks, John. So. Yeah, so I think that's it. That's it. Okay. So, so thank you, Wayne. All right, thank you. Thank you for answering the questions. Thank you.